Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video we will talk about ankylosing spondylitis, also called Morbus Bechterew. Ankylosing spondylitis is a type of chronic inflammatory arthritis that primarily affects the axial skeleton, including the vertebral column, sacroiliac joints and the hip joints. The hallmark of ankylosing spondylitis is the progressive fusion of the vertebral bones, leading to an increased risk of spinal deformities and decreased mobility. In general, the disease presents in young adulthood. In most patients, the disease develops between the ages of 15 and 30, and men are 2.5 to 5 times more commonly affected than women. It is estimated to affect 0.1 to 1% of the global population, so it is not that rare. Ankylosing spondylitis is a form of spondyloarthritis. Spondyloarthritis is a group of inflammatory conditions that also includes psoriatic arthritis and reactive arthritis. The exact cause of ankylosing spondylitis is unknown, but genetic factors play a significant role. Something high yield to note is that the HLA B27 allele is present in over 90% of individuals with ankylosing spondylitis, although not everyone with this allele will develop the condition. Environmental factors such as infections and lifestyle habits, have also been implicated in the development of ankylosing spondylitis. The diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis is based on the clinical examination and imaging studies. Patients usually present with a typical body posture where the upper back curves anteriorly. This is called kyphosis. When the patient is standing against a wall, it is also usually observable that the back of the head will not touch the wall while the lower back and legs are touching the wall. It is also possible to measure the expansion of the thorax with a measuring tape. The difference between the diameter of the thorax in expiration and inspiration is typically below 2 cm in patients with ankylosing spondylitis. To test for the involvement of the iliosacral joint, we can check for the Menel sign. Here the patient is lying on the abdomen and the doctor hyperextends the leg. If the patient reports pain in the hip upon hyperextension, the test is said to be positive and indicates an inflammatory or degenerative damage to the iliosacral joint. Symptoms include lower back pain, stiffness and decreased mobility in the spine. In later stages of the disease, patients may develop a stooped posture and experience difficulty with activities of daily living. With the progression of the disease, also extra-articular symptoms can be seen. Those include acute uveitis, so the inflammation of the middle layer of the eye, cardiovascular involvement by disturbances in the conduction pathway, aortitis, and sometimes also damage to the colon, urethra, and lungs. Characteristic is also that patients are predisposed for a transverse fracture of the bodies of the vertebra, with a seemingly small trauma. This fracture is also called chalk stick fracture. The diagnosis is usually confirmed with imaging studies. In early stages, a X-ray image usually does not show signs of the disease. In this early stage, a MRI is usually the imaging technique of choice. In later stages, the vertebra looks like a bamboo tree. This is due to calcification of the bones, tendons and ligaments. In ankylosing spondylitis, there is repeated inflammation of these tissues and with that scar tissue creation 
and the formation of abnormal bone tissue develops. To identify the chalk stick fractures that we have just talked about, we can do a CT scan. Here are also chronic changes as erosions, subchondral sclerosis and ankylosis are seen better visualized than with a plain X-ray. How can we treat ankylosing spondylitis? Initially, non-steroidal antiflugistics and biologics are the medications of choice. Biologics are usually tumor necrosis factor inhibitors, which reduce the pain and stiffness of the vertebra and increase the mobility. Together with pharmacological treatment, also physiotherapy is important to maintain the mobility as long as possible. Also surgery is an option for treating ankylosing spondylitis. This is however usually done in severe cases and includes options such as spinal fusion to prevent spinal deformities and improve the quality of life of the patient. In a spinal fusion, two or more bones of the vertebra are fused by the help of screws or cages to prevent their movement and deformation. To recap this topic briefly, ankylosing spondylitis is a chronic inflammatory arthritis affecting the axial skeleton and can lead to progressive fusion of the vertebral bones. The cause is unknown, but genetics and environmental factors play a role. Diagnosis is by clinical signs and imaging techniques, initially MRI and later on CT scans and X-rays. The treatment is multidisciplinary, includes pharmacological, physiotherapeutic and surgical options and aims to reduce pain, maintain spinal mobility and prevent spinal deformities. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.